I've been to a lot of fossil sites in the world, and there's nothing quite like this. My name is Reagan Dunn, and I'm assistant curator at the La Brea Tar Pits. So what makes this site really unique is that it's one of the few places on Earth where asphalt bubbles up to the surface and acts as a trap. One of the reasons that the fossil record is, is very important for our understanding of the present and the future is that it has created a record that documents what happens to plants and animals after a major climatic change. When the megafauna begin their decline towards extinction, you see deforestation. We lose about half of the amount of tree cover in this area. Trees take more water. They have different environmental requirements. And so once you start reducing the amount of water, changing the seasonality of precipitation, you can have this dramatic loss of tree species. For instance, one of the best taxa to look at turns out to be juniper. And juniper was really common in this area during the glacial times. And as things start warming up, you see juniper just gradually disappearing. And today, juniper doesn't grow in our landscape here. So here's some examples of juniper wood that is perfectly preserved in the asphalt. If you cut this, you would see it have really nice growth rings. And those growth rings can tell us about different conditions when the plant lived, growing season conditions, how wet it was. Um, we also have other evidence of juniper from these juniper seeds, which is the most abundant specimen that we have at the tar pits. What this research shows is that we have the direct link between a warming period, a total of 10 degrees Celsius, but also drying. And so the effect of those two things together, the warming and the drying, really has the ecosystem changing from sort of a, a coniferous forest, sort of a woodland environment, to more of the chaparral and sort of more open habitats with more arid taxa and fire prone taxa that we know today. And this is the first time that we've really been able to link specific changes in the vegetation to the specific changes in the, in the megafaunal populations. California has already warmed, in some places, three degrees Celsius in the last 100 years. That's a significant warming. Um, we're also in long periods of drought. Southwestern United States has been in a drought for the last 20 years, a drought that hasn't been seen for many millennia before that. So we are experiencing these very similar conditions. On top of that, we have a human population that likes to start fires intentionally or unintentionally. Um, so we have a long record of uh, fire history along with our plant record that really shows that fire was not a common uh, factor on the landscape before about 13,000 years ago. When humans arrive, we see major changes in the frequency of fires and fire intensity. 95% of the fires we see today are caused by anthropogenic sources from power lines or you know, fire campfires that have gotten away or um, from highways or cigarettes or something like that. In a sense, we already know what happens and what we learn from the past can help inform what will happen in the future and how better to plan to avoid ecosystem collapses.